Good morning, everyone. Welcome. We are glad you're here today. Let's stand as we start our worship with Come, now is the time to worship. Good morning, everyone. Let's pray together. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Jesus, come and and move in our hearts and in our minds. God, everything that we are bringing in to this time of worship, we give you. All of our joys and our sadnesses and our frustrations, they're yours. You hold us in the midst of every journey, and you remind us that we're loved. God, meet us here this morning as we get a chance to worship you, as we get a chance to, to sing praises, and as we get a chance to be reminded that we're not alone. We honor you and we love you. It's in the power of your name that we pray. Amen. I speak the name of Jesus over you In your hurting, in your sorrow my God to move. I speak the name cause it's all that I can do. In desperation I'll seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing. Circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus
Good morning. Do I have any other kiddos that'd like to join me up here? Good morning. How are you, Landy? Good. All right, so this morning I brought a picture. What's that a picture of? Do you recognize any of these people? Harrison? Oh, Landon, do you recognize any of these people? Landon, who is this? Family. It's my family. Yep, even Harrison's in there. He's right in the middle. Landon, do you have any pictures of your family at your house? Yeah, a lot, a lot. Um, so, grown ups out here, do you have any pictures of your family at home? Maybe kids, grandkids? Grandkids? Yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe just a few of the grandkids, right? So I bet that if we saw everybody's pictures of everybody's family, do you think that they would all look the same? No, absolutely not, right? Because our, all of our families look different, right? This is how our family looks, but our family doesn't look like Landon's family looks, right? All families can look different. Um, sometimes families might have two moms. Sometimes families might have two dads. Sometimes it might have grandparents. And, um, and we, but we are all a family of God, right? And so we are going to be talking today about how much God loves us. God calls us his children. Just like, just like you have grown-ups in your life that love you so, so much, do you know what? God loves you that much more. And when you make mistakes, have you ever made a mistake? Yeah, yeah, me too. Same, me too, me too. Um, does that did that does that make your grown ups in your life love you any less, or your family love you any less? No, it doesn't. What about with God? When we make mistakes, do you think that makes Him love us any less? Absolutely not, because we are part of His family. Like we have our family on earth, and then we are part of God's heavenly family. And so, as you go through this week and you talk to your friends and you are you spend time with your family, both of you have siblings. Y'all both have sisters. So I want you to remember: Hey, God gave me my sisters, and God gave me my family. And I want you to remember to, even though sometimes it gets really frustrating, right? Sometimes living with family kind of, kind of is hard sometimes. But remember that there's no one in the world that loves you any more than your family. Okay? All right, let us pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for pouring out your love um, to all of us here on earth. And we are so thankful that we are part of your family. Um, we pray that you'll be with us through this tough week that's coming up. 
and, um, and that you will help us be the light. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, if you'd like to go to a small group, we'll meet by the back doors. Good morning, Stone River. Here are your announcements. That was some folks from the Agape Sunday School class. Our April Mission Impact Partner is UMCOR Warehouse. We are collecting disaster relief supplies in the reception area throughout the month. Look in the newsletter for the list of needed items and make sure to sign up in the lobby for an opportunity to volunteer together at the warehouse on Tuesday from 9 to 12. Our backpack food and security team will pack for 25 students on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Our care team will be collecting diapers and gift cards for Gabby and their family to welcome Ember Lynn to the church family this Wednesday during our fellowship meal. On Thursday, our United Women of Faith will gather for a meeting at the church at 11, and our men's ministry will meet for lunch at Canton House at 1130. The Dismantling Racism Team invites all of North Alabama United Methodists to join in holy conversations from 9 to noon this Saturday at Home Street United Methodist Church. Make sure to sign up online. Another opportunity on Saturday morning is to partner with J. Paul Hunger Relief at Solomon Temple anytime from 7 to 10 in the morning. Mark your calendars for the next Leadership Summit next Sunday at 2.30. Everyone is encouraged to come. And just a reminder, if your ministry team would like something in the newsletter or bulletin, emailing it to me by Tuesday would be super helpful. Thank you so much for all you do to serve and give back to the church. I hope you have a great morning. Well, friends, you saw lots of opportunities there to connect with your brothers and sisters, and I know that you're aware of today we get to celebrate the amazing life of Leon Smith with visitation at 2 and the service in here at 315, and then Tuesday we get to celebrate the life of Gary Woods at 2 o'clock. And as our ministry highlight today, as we get to celebrate those two wonderful lives, I'm reminded of one of the things that I love most about this church, and it's the way you show love and you shower love in times like this that are filled with both a whole lot of sadness and a whole lot of love, you come together through your Celebration of Life team and plan a meal and plan a gathering and plan an opportunity for them to sit and to breathe and to connect with their loved ones. And so for those who are in the midst of planning those, who are organizing food, who are setting up and making it look pretty, um, I'm so thankful for you, for your ministry. And if you're looking for a place to serve, that's a great opportunity. So see Rebecca Stadnick or Ella Ferguson, uh, myself or Charlotte. There's a great way to help there. And so thank you, church, for the way that you are Christ when times are hard to loved ones. And what a wonderful ministry that is. Thank you, thank you for that great way that you live your faith. I invite now our ushers to come forward for the giving and receiving of God's tithes and our offerings. And as we sing this next song, it's a song of prayer. And I encourage you during that time to lift up both the joys and the concerns of your heart to our God. And if you'd like somebody to join you in prayer, we'd love the opportunity to do so. Just come forward or in the back and we'd love to pray with you. Gracious God, thank you for this moment that we get to sit. We get to be filled with your spirit through the sung word, spoken word, and the connection of our brothers and sisters. Lord, we're reminded we're not alone. And we're reminded how much you use us. And now, will oh God, we raise to you these tithes and these offerings that you use for your glory. Bless the gift and the giver in Christ's name. Amen. Face to 
God with all your heart and soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself let us be known let us be known by the way Good morning. It's so great to see you all this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all of you that are worshiping online with us this morning. Uh, before we start, we're just going to pause for a moment, though. Um, and, and we're going to pause, and we're going to, to remember, um, remember saints that go before. Or this is a... Um, uh, we, we remember the... The Leon Smiths, uh, we remember the Gary Woods, we remember our loved ones. We remember the, the death of all the innocents and, and throughout going on right now as we're, we're here that are, are in war-ridden countries and areas. We remember uh, our loved ones. And we pause just for a second in the midst of that. Today we're, we're going to be reading, uh, it might be, I always say it's my favorite, but this, this is one uh, I memorized in the NIV back when I was young, and 1 John 3, 1 has always stuck with me. Uh, we're going to see a way that in this letter at 1 John, John's preparing all of us how to live out our daily lives, how to define the way that we demonstrate our belief in the midst of hard, wicked times, the way that we see that. So our text today is coming from 1 John 3, verses 1 through 6. To see, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. For the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves 
Just as he is pure, everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. So today we're going to take this into three, three very chewable bites in a very tough text. This first one is, I want us to know that every one of us are so loved by God that God calls us God's kids. We're then we're, we're going to look a little bit at this bondage that we have to break. We have to separate ourselves from sin. And then we're going to kind of wrap it up and see John's intent of how we're to live out our faith. So we start with this uh, verses 1 through 3. And y'all might not struggle with this, but uh, I, I, know, I know sometimes I do. You just don't feel um, enough, right? Maybe you feel like um, you're not good enough, you've not done enough, you're not doing enough. It's all that guilt and shame stuff. Some of us are pros at piling on us. Um, and if I just did a little more, I just prayed a little harder, I just had that one more, you know, John starts off this passage. We're reminded that God's love is greater than any doubt, than any past hurt, than any fear. That God's love is greater than that. And not just God's love in the, the full for humanity, God's love especially for you. Right? God's love for you is greater than all the things that could separate us from God. So we start walking into this, and we start seeing this, this call of, of Jesus saying, so who are you? And I, I believe our, our first response is going to be, well, I'm, I'm, I'm your kid, right? In the NIV, the, the one that I memorized, and you all have heard me say it probably about every Sunday, is that, I'm your lavishly loved child. That's who I am. I'm lavishly loved by you, and you call me a child of God. What if every morning we woke up with that? Uh, not we woke up with, with all the frustrations and all the guilt and all the shame and all the reality, but we woke up and the first time our, our, our feet hit the ground, after you kind of stretch a little bit so your feet don't hurt, um, but when they, when they hit the ground, like, huh, I'm lavishly loved by God. I'm going to start my day in that reality. I'm going to start my day with 1 John 3, 1, that I'm a child of God, and I'm so loved by God. I'm going to live my day under that truth, under that umbrella, that that is the way that I'm going to carry out my day. I'm going to carry out my day that it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a work in progress because we're going to get to verse 2. I could do verse 1 just the whole time, um, but we're going to move on. Verse 2, it has this beautiful, it has a, a, a little bit about the way that we see resurrection and a little bit about the way we see everyday life. I've not been revealed quite yet. I'm still a work in progress. But my goal is, is I want, when I am revealed, I, I want to see Jesus more and more and more every day of my life so that I'm acting and demonstrating my life more and more and more like that. Because one day, when I think of final breath, I'm going to be completely revealed. I'm going to see Jesus. I'm going to have the bear hug. I'm going to see all that's going to happen. But here on earth, I'm still a work in progress. Right? I still am going after this, this way of how do I live myself? How do I demonstrate the great love of Jesus in this fallen world? How do I do it? How do I continue to have that strength and that courage to grow and to be more and more and more like him? How am I, am I living in this way of revealing who Jesus is by the way that I act? 
the way that I treat myself, and the way that I treat others? How is Jesus' love being so demonstrated through that that others could see that Jesus is in me? That's just in the first two verses. But it's the way that we start our day. It's the way that we start this incredible conversation of being able to know that today we get a stand with Jesus. Right? Today we get a chance to stand for peace and compassion and belonging and kindness. Today we get a chance to stand with Jesus for justice and for love. We get that opportunity today. Then we start to slip into the second category of verses 4 through 6. But we choose separation, right? We choose bondage. We choose sin. We choose decay. We choose darkness. And for some of us, it doesn't make any sense, right? We, in, in 1 John, sin is mentioned 17 times. And it's not just the things that we do against God, the things that we do against ourselves, the things that we do against others. It also mentions the, the full corporate sin of, of the systemic way that we just continue to go along with the flow of harming others. It, it has a, a, a category of the way that we can stop this to the power of Jesus Christ of accepting that love. But my best way to explain it this morning is when... I don't know if y'all are like me a little bit in this, but do y'all ever talk to your TV? <laughs> like uh, during a football game, you're trying to tell your coach what defensive scheme are you running? Why, why aren't you going with a... Uh, do you ever do that? How about during like TV shows or scary movies? When you're like, don't go down to the basement. <laughs> Come on, there's scary noises. It's midnight. You don't have a flashlight. You have really bad electricity. Don't go in the closet. Don't go up in the attic. What are you doing? Right? We're, we're there. I think sometimes our daily lives, we, we fall into that. Right? We fall into, why am I going down to the dark, scary basement? Why am I going into the attic with the scary sounds coming out of it uh, by myself? Uh, we choose separation. We choose sin. We choose bondage. We don't set out our day, man, I'm going to sin great today. I'm going to hurt, hurt as many people as I possibly can including myself, and including how people recognize Jesus Christ. I'm going to treat people so poorly that they would never want a chance to meet my Savior. I don't think any of us start out our days like that. I don't think in these horror movies any of us ever start out our days, I'm going to go down into the, the scary places. But where First John leads us is this place that we don't have to hurt other people, but we choose to. We don't have to demoralize, to, um, to be unkind, to be ungracious to people. We choose to. We don't have to see people like Jesus does. We don't have to choose people like Jesus doesn't. We choose to put people in, in category. We choose harm. We don't even have to see ourselves in negative ways. But we choose that. First John starts off saying, remember, you're lavishly loved by God. You're God's kid. Do you know how important that is? Stop choosing to go down to the dark, scary basement. Stop choosing to fall into this, this, this continual... Um, Decay of sin and darkness, choosing to repay evil for evil, choosing to, to, to cause harm. Stop it. You're lavishly loved. How are you going to demonstrate the great love of Jesus to a world that is so desperately in need 
of that love and that saving power. This whole sermon series is going to be about the way that we're going to define that. The way that we're going to define who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ has done in our lives. If you leave the sermon and you're not challenged, then, then shame on us. Because this is a challenging text. It's a challenging book. Our call this morning is to be reminded, <laughs> to be reminded of this choice. But also our call this morning is because of Jesus, we don't have to live in that trap, right? Because of Jesus, we don't have to live with being <laughs> strangled and, and suffocated in our sin and in our darkness. Because of Jesus, we get to live freedom and light and love. We get a chance to do that. Amen. If we don't know the Savior, I would so love to talk with you about Jesus Christ. So I want to talk about the way that um, uh, for someone that uh, I, I don't know life without Jesus, I've always been in, in, in that pocket. I've known Jesus in stronger ways and seasons. And I'm, I still have to struggle with don't go in that, don't go there, right? It's a choice every one of us make every day. And the more and more and more and more that Jesus has revealed, the stronger that we're going to be. And that's what we're going to demonstrate to this world. That's the way that we're going to impact the world and change this world for Jesus Christ is by us choosing to live as lavishly loved children. This, this final part as we, we wrap up is defining this. The only way for us to ever correct bad theology is to live out good theology. I say that a lot. It's one of my core things. It just makes so much sense to me. Um, the only way for us to, to, to change anyone that has been hurt in the past is for us to stop the hurt and to continue to showcase great love of Jesus Christ. It's the only way for us to stand with Jesus, for us to be able to be reminded that Jesus never takes pleasure in any of our pain or our struggle or our suffering, but is there with us. They're grieving with us, they're encouraging us, and they're pointing us forward in hope. Again, Again, I'm going back to my, my, my younger days of memorizing my NIV, but see what great love the Father has given us. We're the lavishly loved children of God, but that's who you are. Right? That's the fact. That's what we live in. That's what we make our decisions in. That's what we live our life. That's the way we move forward. Right? We move forward with that knowledge. Zergar Moltmann uh, a, a theologian, pastor, author, uh, wrote about this idea that we must live resurrection in heaven in reverse. Right? There's going to come a time for every one of us that we'll take a final breath and we'll be in, in, in heaven forever. That time will be no more, no more tears and no more suffering. It's also... All the worldliness will, will have died, and only the kingdom of God will remain. Moltmann's call for us would be, live that now. Let's not, let's not wait until we don't have breath to live in that peace. But let's continue today to stand with Jesus to usher in the kingdom of God today. Let's choose to, to, to distance ourselves from as much darkness as possible so that we can be a bright light into this community, a lighthouse into this community, showcasing God's great love, partnering with where, where we identify darkness is to be able to find systems and ways to usher in light and hope and healing into those areas. Right? This is our call. This is who we are, to be able to be that type of person. On Tuesdays, we have this time of the kitchen table, good coffee, even better conversations. Um, and Tuesday, 
I was listening, and there were some things, and I, I asked if I could use these. But one of the things, Betty, that you said, you said uh, to live your life in such a way um, that you're at peace every night when you say good night, Lord. Is that close? All right, to be able to live today in a way where you're not, uh, man, I gave that one a zinger. I, I really hurt that person today. Woohoo! To live your life in such a way that tonight you can go, good night, Lord. Pat Parrish said, um, my past is forgiven. My future is in eternity. Today I live for God. My call for us today would be for us to remember, for you to remember, that you're lavishly loved by the creator of the world, the universe. That Jesus Christ, once we say yes to the Savior, Jesus lives in us, ushering goodness and kindness and power through us. May we not choose sin, not choose the bondage that breaks us, but may we choose to live in that lavish love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, what did you hear today that will help you demonstrate your faith today and in the days ahead? Uh, I hope you'll carry these words with you and allow that to just God's spirit to spill over you. Um, I'm so thankful for this community of faith. And if you're looking for a community of faith, we would love to welcome you to this community where you get to have togetherness and you get to uh, demonstrate your faith together with one another. We would love to welcome you if you're looking for a church home and have decided this is it. We'd love to welcome you. Maybe you've not accepted Christ as your Savior and you would like to do that, of to embrace the light instead of the darkness. And we would love to pray with you and walk with you in that as well. So as we sing this final song, I invite you to pray of how you will allow the words you've heard today to carry with you to demonstrate your faith each day this week. When the best of me is barely breathing, when I'm not somebody I believe in, hold on to me. When I miss the light, the night is stolen, when I'm slamming all the doors you want.
a great chorus for us to leave from this place. May the great love of Christ for you hold you and guide you this week. May you leave this place with the factual knowledge that you are so loved by the creator of the world. That may that love protect you and guide you into everything that you do this week. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.